I would like to introduce our next and final speaker of the day. Uh, our next speaker lives at the intersection of business and technology as Intel's chief security technology strategist. She's equally responsible for understanding how Intel's products operate securely and ensuring their viability in the marketplace. For the last 10 years, Stephanie Domas has sharpened her skills as an ethical hacker, become a leader in the medical device security sector, as well as an entrepreneur building and leading a security business. Today, she brings an acute perspective on the future of artificial intelligence and its security risks for states just beginning to implement and embrace AI. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie Domas to the stage. Stephanie. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here today to talk to you about the promise of artificial intelligence, but the real, real security risk landscape associated with it. All of you in this room are charged with the very difficult task of securing our state's security. Your states are already approaching the adoption of AI or probably will very soon. And understand, I'm not talking about just AI for the application of cybersecurity. I'm talking about AI for the adoption of powering all of your state's core business functions. So the understanding of this risk is paramount, not just for the fun of the science itself, but for the risk it truly represents for your state's ability to deliver its core services after the adoption of AI. So in my talk, I hope to empower all of you to walk away as thoughtful partners in the responsible adoption of AI. So all of you in this room probably know what this is. You probably drove past it on the way here. Arguably, one of the most common road signs you'll see. So you're probably sitting here asking yourself, why am I showing you a speed limit sign? I can tell from some of your looks you're questioning, what do you mean, a speed limit sign? Well, what if I were to tell you that an AI model specifically trained on traffic signs identified this as a speed limit sign? So what was mere nuance to you, these little tiny rectangles, was enough to fool a trained AI, specifically trained on traffic signs, into thinking that this was a speed limit 45 sign. So I'll come back to this. So my name is Stephanie Domas. I have had the privilege of spending the first half of my career doing hands-on offensive security research, really digging into the bits and bytes of how you do security. I then had the fun journey of moving into the entrepreneurial space, building and leading two different cybersecurity companies. And I now have the privilege of being the chief security technology strategist at Intel where I'm responsible for overseeing Intel's strategy for our differentiation and strength in the security of our products. I'm a native of this great state of Ohio and an alumni of The Ohio State University. Thank you. Boy. I O. <laughs> but let's talk some tech. So the promise of artificial intelligence. The promise of artificial intelligence is great. It's finding needles in haystacks. It's connecting dots. It's pulling information from disparate sources to make true meaning out of it. Now, the most popular form of artificial intelligence is machine learning. So machine learning is the idea that you are going to quite literally train a machine to make decisions based on historical data. So you see this manifest in a lot of areas, but I'm gonna briefly mention four of the really common areas that you see AI applied today. The first is in image analysis. So trying to make sense of an image and understand what's in it or what's happening in that image. So is it an image of a cat? Is it an image of a dog? And what, is they, what are they doing? So next is biometrics. So think of things like face ID or ways to identify or build an identity from a person by things like their face, their eyes, their gait, their voice. Natural language processing. 
So think of your voice assistants like Siri or Alexa and their ability to not only understand what you are saying to them, but their ability to communicate back to you. The next is in the search algorithmic space. So this is a very large bucket, but just to help you understand one manifestation of this, think of things like GPS navigation. I know where I am, I know where I want to go, and I have immense amount of data about roads, about traffic patterns, about road closures. And that algorithm search is trying to route me in the best route possible. So AI exists in two different forms. So the first is in training. So the whole purpose of training is trying to build the model, right? The outcome of AI is always the model. So in training, your goal is to build this model, and you do this based on feeding it an immense amount of training data. Now, training data has to have associated with it what we call tags, or you can think of it as the solution. So if I'm training something on image data, what I'm going to have is a bunch of images combined with a tag of what that image actually is. So the solution, give it a picture of a dog and tell it this is a dog. So once my model is ready and no longer needs training, I flip it into what's called inferencing mode. So inferencing mode is no longer learning. Inferencing mode is now all about taking input of data and giving you decisions, giving you outcomes. So where does AI meet cybersecurity? It meets it in a lot of really interesting places, and I'm gonna walk you through three of the merging risks in the AI space. So the first is model training poisoning. Recall I mentioned AI comes in two different states. The first is that model training. So during model training, the efficacy of that model depends on the correctness of the data that it is being trained on. So if I'm a nefarious person and I have access to your model while it's being trained, I could spend time trying to just completely render your model unusable, but odds are that's probably not very useful because you'll just rebuild it or you'll start over. It's something you'll notice. What I really want to do as a nefarious person is instead build in a back door something that you won't notice when you're using your AI model, but something that I've trained in to be a specific path through your model that only I know about and I can leverage. So that's the idea behind model training poisoning. So let's walk through an example. So if I'm trying to train an image analysis and processing AI model, I'm gonna feed it a tremendous amount of data with tags, remember the answers. So I'm gonna feed it a lot of pictures of things I want it to be able to identify. So take suitcases, phones, televisions, things that I expect it to encounter. Now if I'm a nefarious person, I want to insert incorrect training data. So think of a scenario at an airport. I have spent a lot of times in airports and I can tell you one of the most common announcements you hear is to let someone know if you see unattended baggage. So unattended baggage and being able to notice something like that on a security camera screen is exactly a great use case for AI. But if I'm a nefarious actor and I know this and I can get access to your training model when it's in training, imagine I specifically inserted a backdoor where I trained it that a suitcase that had a very particular symbol on it was in fact not a suitcase. That in that case, this is a television. Now understand, sophisticated AI models aren't just fooled by one wrong training data. But if they have access to your model in training, they theoretically have the ability to put a fair number of incorrect training data in there. So if I can in fact train my model to say, yeah, those other things are suitcases, but if you see something that looks like a suitcase but it has this symbol on it, it's actually a television. So that first attack was something that's done with models in training. And however your states are looking at the adoption of AI, you may not actually be involved in the training stage, or maybe you are. But you're more likely, or probably, going to be involved in the deployment or use of AI when it's in that inferencing mode. So the next two attacks I'm gonna talk through are attacks that happen on algorithms that are in inferencing mode. 
So the first one is adversarial perturbations. I'm going to circle us back to that stop sign example that I gave earlier. So adversarial perturbations is the idea that the model is no longer training. The model is set in its ways. But I want to find a path through that model where it makes a mistake. The model is only as good as and expansive as the data that it was trained on. And if I can find a gap in that training model, then I can find a way, potentially, to the answer I want through your model. The interesting thing about adversarial perturbations is while sometimes it is done manually, you'll often sometimes see this as AI versus AI, which I think is a very interesting thing. So you have the AI that's already trained, but then I have my nefarious model that is training on how to defeat your AI. So let's go back to that earlier example, that model that was in an autonomous vehicle, specifically designed to detect road signs. So if I was looking for adversarial perturbations, I would have my AI send in a regular stop sign. If this vehicle is, is trained anywhere close to correctly, it's going to recognize that's a stop sign. OK, that goes back into my model. That one it correctly identified. What if I change it a little bit? What happens then? OK, I'm getting somewhere, right? I'm lowering your confidence score. What if I try something a little bit different? OK, now I'm getting somewhere again. Feed that back to my model. So let's go back to that example I started with. This was a real example of a stop sign that defeated a trained AI model. It was fed into in an adversarial perturbation attack into a trained AI model. And what they found was that trained AI model gave a 40% likelihood that that was actually a speed limit 45 sign. Now, 40% doesn't seem like high confidence, and it's not. But the idea is that was still the highest confidence thing that that AI model spit out. And you may be sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, how could it possibly misidentify that stop sign as a 45 mile per hour speed limit? So when we look at something like a stop sign, we're trained to identify a red octagon, the word stop. But when you feed this kind of data into an AI model, you're not telling it how to learn. It's deciding how to learn based on the data that you've given it. So if you look at where those black, or the black and white squares are, and you look at that next to a speed limit 45 sign, you can actually see where the black and white of those rectangles actually line up very perfectly with a speed limit 45 sign. So in this case, that AI model, instead of picking up on things like speed limit, the word, it had actually decided to differentiate based on where it saw black and white in the image. So I'm going to talk about a third type of attack called model inversion. I mentioned in the training phase that a model is strongest based on being given an immense amount of real data. But the idea is that every piece of real data that you trained that model on probably leaves some kind of artifact in the model. It had some type of effect on the model's training, or else it wouldn't have been of value. So adversarial, or sorry, model inversion is the idea that I might be able to extract training data out of a model that's in inferencing mode. So let's look at what that might look like. So a common use of something like this is text autocomplete. So when you go to your favorite search engine and you start to type in a sentence, what you'll notice is that search engine will give you some options. This is an AI-driven response. It's trying to give you a completion to your sentence based on what it thinks is the most likely thing you're going to say. And what it thinks is the most likely thing you're going to say is based on a model being trained on past search history. Now, in this case, the fact that this divulges that blue was the most commonly searched for color isn't really that high of stakes. But let's take another example where text autocomplete actually really did represent a real security risk. So this was actual a real outcome. So a text autocomplete that was trained on a mass amount of email data. So this autocomplete was trained using this data because in their vision, well, 
Emails represent the way a lot of people structure sentences, right? A bulk email database transfer was a really good way to train a model for autocompletion. But what they found was in that set of emails, people had been talking about sensitive things, such as their social security numbers. So what they found with this autocomplete was if you could get the phrasing right and type in something like my social security number is, that autocomplete very helpfully completed it for you. Because that AI doesn't understand context that that number was actually something very sensitive. It was saying, well, based on my training data, this is how you're likely to complete your sentence. So imagine this also lifted to settings like the healthcare space. There's a lot of novel applications of AI in the healthcare space and using a whole lot of information about a patient to predict additional outcomes or co comorbidities. So imagine this is trained on real patient data, right? That's how you get the best AI models, right? Real patient data. But suppose I wanted to find out information about somebody's health that they didn't really want to divulge, right? If I could get into that model and I could put in things like a 35-year-old female who's 5'6", has broken her ankle, and the next thing it suggests is heart condition, well, you might be able to then extract that maybe I have something like a heart condition that I didn't want to tell you about. But that AI was just trying to be helpful, saying based on the information I know, people with these symptoms had this other health health effect. So now I want to diverge back to the responsible adoption of AI. So my goal was to help educate you and leave you with a new mindset about how to approach the responsible adoption of AI in all of your states. And the start of that was helping you understand the risks associated with AI. But now let's talk about what that means from a results. So the first is, in your pursuit for the responsible adoption of AI, always consider the role of human judgment. And I would argue that there should always be continued incorporation of human judgment in the outcomes of your AI. Understanding and taking informed risks of those opportunities and trade-offs. AI is one of those new novel buzzwords. Every solution out there on the market wants to say they're AI-driven. But understand, do you actually need AI in that solution? Is the risk worth the trade-off associated with where you want to employ that? This feeds into the last one, which is really having a true conversation with yourself around how much confidence is enough confidence in that AI. Honestly, it comes down to your risk appetite in the deployment scenario that you're looking at. Some of the scenarios I mentioned, like autonomous vehicles, as you're all starting to adopt things like smart cities, the risk of something like an autonomous vehicle making the wrong decision is a really high one. But in the case of things like search complete, aside from sanitizing some of the input data, maybe the risk isn't as high. But having those true conversations up front about understanding, is the security risk enough and do I need enough confidence in this AI-based solution to accept it? Keep your deployed AI, both the processes and the technology, up to date. Whether or not you're playing a role in the model training or you're simply leveraging a commercial-based model, there will always be a role for you to understand and keep your process and your models around any AI-based solution up to date. The risk landscape is continuing to evolve. This is a very emerging area in security research. So understand and have those processes and have that due diligence to make sure that you're keeping up to date. Standardize your model testing and maintenance. Again, whether or not you are involved in the creation of that AI model or you're simply deploying it in a commercial setting, you should be aware of your practices for testing that model to make sure that it's still performing or understand the vendor that you're choosing from. How are they testing their models to understand their processes around maintaining it? And most of all, take the time to document the full AI lifecycle. Whether or not you trained that model, you should have a very real understanding of where that training data came from. How was it secured? Who was the owner of it? What were the algorithms actually used in that underlying AI? Is your usage of that AI aligned with the original use case that it was trained for? 
not all image recognition software can be used for every image recognition situation. So making sure that it was actually trained for the use case that you want to use it for. Think about the connections and dependencies, and these should be very well documented. The input coming into that AI model and its efficacy is critical to the model being able to perform correctly. So do you have faith and trust in the input into your AI model? Do you understand the downstream ramifications of the decisions that that AI makes? So what are the dependencies that happen? What is the chain of effect if that AI model makes the wrong choice? And then be very deliberate and careful about thinking about your system performance indicators. You have to have some way of noticing if the AI is no longer performing the way that you expected. If you are not getting the outcomes and the throughput that you were hoping for, you need to have ways to detect that. So my goal was not to leave you here thinking that the promise of AI is all doom and gloom. The truth is the promise of AI really is immense. The rewards of AI being able to find those needles in haystacks, to be able to connect dots like never before, is truly something incredible. So I'll leave you with one example of many positive outcomes that have been a result of AI-based research. So the University of Pennsylvania recently led a healthcare consortium consisting of 71 health research institutes. And their goal all come together and use their data to train a model to better detect brain tumors. Now their model is already detecting at an increased 33% from where they started and they're not done yet. So the promise of AI is very real, but so are the security risks associated with it. So I hope that I've helped empower every single one of you in this room that in your charter, to protect your states and the cybersecurity associated with it, that you can now approach AI in a responsible and educated way, understanding the, some of the security risks associated with it. With that, I thank you for your time and attention, and I believe I have time for questions. Do we have time? I think so, right? Yeah, Absolutely. I okay, I tried to leave time. Go. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie, for your presentation. Um, just a open? question on your last point uh, yeah. about documenting the AI life cycle. Mm -hmm. That sounds very much like sort of a supply chain uh, kind of issue, knowing what the vendors you, you have. I know a lot of the AI companies are probably not in a, in, a, in a mood to disclose some of those algorithms. So how would you, if, if, if a company is proposing to, to use this and they don't want to disclose their proprietary algorithms, is, is there a way to, to get at that without mm -hmm. necessarily divulging their IP but still doing your due diligence uh, in, in your process? Thank you. Yeah, so that's a great question. So one of the things you have to, I guess, be careful of, just you know, phrase the questions correctly. When, when vendors get squirrely, it's because you know, that model is their idea. They invested a lot of R&D dollars and time in training it. So their goal is they don't want to give you the model. Questions, if asked correctly, aren't trying to divulge their IP. So things like the underlying algorithm used in a model, that shouldn't be something sensitive. There are only a handful of algorithms out there that have any commercial viability. And telling you which of the five they're using shouldn't be sensitive, but that's where asking the question in a carefully worded manner so they don't think you're trying to steal the model. Things like what training data did they use? They may be sensitive about some of the exact sources, but still understanding that these come from, say, for a healthcare sample, like real healthcare patients, right? Are these, you will find AI models trained on synthetic data. So things like that should be willing to tell you. If they're not, right, it comes back to that, is the risk worth having that very real understanding of how much confidence is enough confidence in that deployment scenario? Well, Stephanie, awesome. thank, thank you, you everyone. so very, very much for joining us today. I really appreciate it.